think about how hard you've worked to get to this situation. It's going to be a battle, it's going to be a war basically and we've got to win that battle. It's a great challenge for everyone. It might run for Bradley Johnson! What a finish! <laughs> wonderful, wonderful goal! These games, are the big games we call them, they, they take care of themselves, you know, you don't have to get motivated for, for them games. If, if you can't motivate yourself for them games, then you shouldn't be playing football, basically. Walking around town, you could tell the, the excitement in the game, you know, it was the first time we were playing them at home in, in a few years, and I've been in the game a long time now, you can tell when players are up for games and when they're not. Every single one of us, from the 11 who, who were starting to all the subs and, and the management team and the staff, everyone was fired up for that game. Well, we're about to go on air in the next five minutes, and what I'm waiting for now are the, the, the team lineups. I've done my research on who might play, and in the next few minutes, we'll find out from the two managers exactly who's starting this game, and then we'll be able to write them out in formation order so that myself and you and Roberts, uh, the Norwich City hero who's uh, commentating with me today, can get a head around exactly which, who's playing for who and which way the teams are going to line up. There always is something particularly special on, on East Anglian Derby Day. Uh, to give you an example, to get up here to the gantry, we always have to come through the, the bit of the, the jowl stand where the away fans are sat. And that isn't usually a problem, it's usually quite straightforward to get up here, but we just had the, the dilemma of trying to get you and Roberts through a load of Ipswich fans. I'm just glad we're playing Ipswich today and we weren't playing them back in the autumn when, when Norwich were on that, that sticky run of form. I think that in that way the fixture list has worked against Ipswich Town this season. I really hope that Norwich City can keep their good recent run going, going for four derby wins in a row today. Thank you. Hi, mate. How are you? How are you? you okay? Good, thanks. Good. Hi, guys. Stand by. Nice yep. Mick, big game in the promotion race and a local derby as well. Are these the kind of games that you and your players relish? Very much so. Yeah, it was uh, two years ago we were scrapping against relegation. It's we're pushing for promotion now and it's a huge game. Delighted to be involved. Here we go. Norwich City will attack the River End in the first half. We are underway on Derby Day on BBC Radio Norfolk. And uh, unless we get a draw over the next 90 minutes, somebody out there or even on the bench is about to carve their name into the hearts of one of these sets of supporters forever because you score on a day like this and it gets remembered. They eventually get it away, not convincingly. They need some help from Houlihan just to work it further away. And now Bradley Johnson surges onto it, takes a kick in the head there from Cole Skews. The ball bounced up, Johnson went to get it and nodded it forward and Skews swung the volley at it and caught Bradley Johnson in the forehead. Brave as a lion. Norwich try again now, a little bit of skill from Houlihan on halfway. Gets it back now from Housen. Houlihan sets off, halfway inside the Ipswich half. Nice reverse pass to Graven, corner of the penalty area. Graven tries to cut it back towards Houlihan. It might run for Bradley Johnson! What a finish! And Norwich take the lead in the East Anglian derby! And it's a Bradley Johnson belter! Carroll Road celebrates, Norwich won, Ipswich nil! Houlihan will play it early, off goes Cameron Jerome, it's his first touch and he's in uh, on the edge of the Ipswich penalty area here, Jerome in the box, making room for the shot, oh it's hit Graben and it's bounced over the line, it's a scrappy goal but that doesn't bother anyone in the Barkley end because they've just had the perfect view of Norwich doubling their lead, Jerome straight into the action, it was his shot, it was scuffed and it was bundled over the line by Lewis Graben. Anglia. 
Bradley Johnson, another cracking goal. He's, he's doing that every week at the moment. Goals like that, they're, they're the easy ones to commentate on. It's when you're, you're doing a drab nil-nil draw, like the one at Birmingham you know, a couple of months ago. That, that's when you earn your money as a commentator. Bradley Johnson scoring a cracker in the derby, that's easy. Well, Bradley Johnson, here we are again asking about whether that's your favourite goal that you've scored all season. You said it was on Tuesday. Has it just been beaten? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, no, it was a great, it was a good finish. Um, Grabs on well, pulling it back. I only had one thing on my mind and that was to hit it and thankfully it went in and said it, I said that is my best goal and to do it against Ipswich as well and, and to beat him, it's one um, that I'll always remember. It's really good to sort of get the experience of playing in front of these crowds in an England badge, seeing these, the national anthem at the start. It's quite a, a proud moment for me, singing that national anthem. So it's really good to sort of get back in it. Well, yeah, Swindon's been uh, really well at the moment. They're playing really good football and we're now currently sat in third in the league. It's a very young team at Swindon. And they've been very welcoming for me since I arrived. And to get sort of a, earn my starting place, it's been really good to get there. I had sort of a rest from a couple games, but to get back into the starting 11s always was my aim and I'm really pleased to be back in it. I feel the loan programmes are a vital tool and a part of the, each player's development. Um, I think it's a really interesting and it's a, quite a debatable subject at the moment about how we make that pathway for our young players into our first team. Academy football is fantastic. Uh, the facilities and your training environment that you set um, is down to yourself and you can create a really elite environment and the under 21 football is uh, improving every season but ultimately you sometimes need another ingredient and I think that extra ingredient is the under 21s players and the young first team players go out and on loan and playing senior football week in week out. Definitely you have to be a man because you're playing Saturday, Tuesday and you're playing with men that are paying for their mortgages, a couple of the boys in the Swindon team have just had babies. So that's a whole new sort of life they're living now. And if you look in the under-21s team, I don't think any of them are having babies or any of them got mortgages. So it's one of those things you've got to play to win and you're playing in front of uh, the county ground 9,000 people every week. Harry Toffolo has been with us since he was a teenager and he's come all the way through and we've looked after him, we've prepared him, we've developed him. He's now got to go and stand on his own two feet and, and really in the real world. We played against Tottenham in the BT Sport game. Um, a massive crowd, a lot of work went behind the scenes. The whole environment, the whole night felt like a proper game. It gave the, the squad an opportunity to go out and perform. And on the back of that performance, Swindon Town came calling. If we had played that game at Colney, at the training ground, in a sterile environment, would Swindon A have turned up? Probably no. And B, would, would Harry have played or been recognised for his performance in the same way. I don't think he would have. So that one environment, that one game, that one activity has created an opportunity for Harry to go on loan, which was initially only a month, and then it's been extended to the rest of the season. Now, what great learning, what great experience, and what great opportunity for Harry to develop. And on the back of that, has also came an England under 20 call up. You can't put a price on that. I say take it game by game, but I'm hoping to get a uh, promotion with uh, Swindon hopefully through automatics and then if that doesn't work out definitely go through the playoffs. It's one thing that I have to look at at the end of the season. I spoke to Ricky Martin and I haven't actually met the, the new gaffer but I've heard really good things about him from all the other boys and I look forward to working with him. These are the games where, like I said, I'll keep on saying that, take care of themselves, you know, we didn't have to get motivated. We knew how much it meant to us and the fans and, and everyone in and, in and around the club. You know, the gaffer prepared us well that week. Obviously dropping points at Huddersfield, uh, it's a must-win game for us. I think the full squad, certainly the starting 11, were well aware um, the importance of the game and, and what was expected of them. Um, 
And to be fair, all you can ever look for after a sort of disappointing performance is a reaction. And I felt certainly against Nottingham Forest, I don't think there's any questions. We got that and I think it was certainly one of our best performances since I've been here. It was a little bit cagey early, but obviously it's going to be that way, obviously, because it's a, it's a massive game. And, um, you know, we, we played some good stuff. I thought our system we played really worked. And I think um, the, the tactics what the manager gave us and the instructions, we, we carried them out perfectly, you know. It's a good first goal by Johnny, good move, uh, good touch around the corner from uh, Graham into Wes. And, you know, Wes does, does what Wes does and he, he probes and he finds little pockets. And, uh, you know, it's a great little ball into Johnny. And, you know, obviously uh, it was a nice, quick, composed finish. And, you know, that set us on our way. <laughs> it was sort of, um, you know, obviously it was a good cross by Martin, it was slightly behind me so I had to sort of improvise and you know, obviously I just flicked it knowing that the goal was sort of behind me and I was half looking over my shoulders to say, because it came off the post and I was like half looking over my shoulder thinking, oh, is that going to creep in or is it going wide and you know, I seen it creeping in and I thought, well I can't start running off now, I've just got to, got to stay chilled but, um, but that was the most important thing for me that we, we got a second goal and it enabled us to kick on and, and really put the game to bed then. My task is to win games, you know, and, and David and Delia and Michael and the chairman and all the people who have employed me um, have put a sort of, to be honest, like, it was a brave move, you know, like you say, nobody in England really knew me. Um, I'd only been managing for a limited period of time. Um, there's probably some players here who are older than me <laughs> as the manager, um, but none of that really concerns me. I mean, it's not something that phases me, it's not something I even think about, if I'm being honest. Um, and I'm just thankful, really, that they, they seen it the same way. And the fact that they felt I was assertive enough and that I could come in and take control of the group and sort of get them playing and get them functioning and just get them working and, uh, on a daily basis as well as a sort of game basis um, in a manner that was, was going to win his games and it was disciplined and everybody knew what their tasks was and things like that. And I think the fact that I've managed to do that in such a short space in time um, really I'm just, I'm just glad that I've sort of semi-repaid that faith that they've shown and my biggest driving factor is the fact that I don't want to let those people down, you know, they, they've took that chance on me and I want to repay them as much as I can. We can't just turn up and think, oh yeah, we're going to win today. We, we've got to turn up with the attitude that it's going to be a battle, it's going to be a war basically, and we've got to win that battle. My main aim, like I said at the beginning of the season, is to get this club promoted and we've got a good chance of doing that now. So every game that I'm selected for and I'm playing that I go into, my main aim is just to win the game. I don't care how we play, who we play. We've just got to win as many as we can and, and see where we finish. I think there was a time when it was maybe slipping away from us and and you're looking at it and thinking, we need to go for the playoffs and make sure we get in that playoffs. I think that's what can happen in this league. Um, you know, because it's so tight, because you've got no one running away with it. You hit a, a good bit of form, like we'd shown, and, and you're right up there. Um, you know, we've give, give ourselves a great chance now. There was a couple of times in the season where we'd, especially when we was on a, such a bad run, where I was thinking, well, you know, will we, even make the playoffs. People was asking, you know, if Norwich gone, is that it? Or, you know, uh, are they just going to fade out? But you know, I thought we've responded magnificently to that. You know, we've uh, just concentrated what's in our dressing room and we've got and we've trained our results and performances. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, we, we had such a, a shift of power since the manager come in and the momentum we, we we built up. It's been fantastic, and I wouldn't swap it for anyone else's momentum in the league whatsoever. You know, I think we've got the best momentum, and I think. Um, we're the team to be feared because if we do 
what we're supposed to do and do what we can do and we're capable of, then you know, I, I think we can go and beat them for all, all of them. And you know, if we get enough wins throughout that, that spell, like I said, then you know, we're going to go up. And I've always felt that you know, it's up to us. If we want it you know, and we perform and get the right results, then you know, we'll be there. Think about how hard you've worked to get to this situation. Now, what we can't do is rest on laurels. What we can't do is think that, right, that's us done the hard work. The hard work really starts now. So all the what we've done to this point, what it's given us is an opportunity. Because that opportunity really, when I took over, wasn't really there, for being honest. You know, I think we were 12, 13 points away at one stage. And realistically, I'm not sure Automatic was on the cards. However, um, I felt, like I said, if we gained a bit of momentum, then you never know, we could maybe creep in. And I think at this stage now, there's absolutely no reason why we can't be one of the top two. And it's about how much as a group do we actually want to get promoted, you know? Because it's going to take every single thing you've got. Um, from everyone, not just for sort of individuals, from, from every single person in the group. We're going to have to be pulling the one way and, and showing what we're made of really and it's a great challenge for everyone.